Hi, I'm Chetna Mishra, founder of Mompreneur Zindia, and I'm back again with another episode of Mompreneur Talks with Dr. Arundhati Hoskeri on children's education and parenting. Now, as parents, we make sure that our children are safe and protected. If they're going out in the sun, we make sure they have applied sunscreen. If they're going to the park, we make sure that they have applied mosquito repellent on their arms and legs and knees. If they're going to ride a cycle, we make sure that they're wearing their helmets. And if they're crossing the roads, we've trained them to look left, then right, and then only cross. But what have we done to protect them and to keep them safe from all the bullies, the predators, and inappropriate content online? Let's face it, the internet is here to stay. And almost 80% of our teens are logging to the internet three to four times a day. With COVID and uh, the easy access to smartphones and laptops, children today are spending almost six to eight hours online. So as parents, if we have not included cyber safety as one of the tools in our parenting toolkits, then it's high time we do that now. And that's the subject of our discussion today on Mompreneur Talks. Dr. Arundhati Hoskeri is a certified cybercrime intervention officer and she's also a volunteer with the ISAC uh, COP Connect. She's here today to share her tips and insights on cybercrime and how we can keep our kids safe when they are online. So let's listen. Good evening. This is Dr. Arundhati Hoskeri, an educationist. Well, this is my second interaction with you. And uh, last month I spoke about online schooling and how COVID-19 has impacted the entire education system, not just in India, all over the world. But today's talk is something very interesting. It's kind of continuation of last uh, talk, I could say, because it's somewhere very closely connected. So today I will be talking about cyber safety for children. All right. Actually, we are living in an information age. Anything and everything we want to know is at our fingertips. All the electronic gadgets and internet have been a part and parcel of our life. Technological progress has actually changed the entire world in many ways, I would say and still continues to do so. It's not a past tense, it's an ongoing process. So digital innovations have been influencing every aspect of our lives. So they are providing newer opportunities to connect and also to learn. We have become so dependent on them that just we just can't imagine our life without gadgets and internet. Children and young people have shown a greater ability to adapt and adopt to digital devices and innovations, which is really good. Actually, these devices help us, help these everyone, like not just the children or youth, every one of us uh, for self-expression, communication, networking, research, entertainment, and much more. In, in a way, we could say that internet has enabled our children to become active social agents, the agents for change. Generally, children are often much better with digital technology than their parents and teachers. This is a general belief and very confident about their skills. This very confidence could be misleading sometimes. They may fail to understand whether the information of like you know what they are seeking uh, on an unfamiliar website is trustworthy or not how do generally we go for, go in for information we just uh, type in a search engine and we see the results so whatever tops the list we feel oh wow, that is authentic but there is a lot of you know other things attached to it which children do not understand obviously because this rating may be commercially induced so how much to trust, what to trust, what information to trust, these children need to understand. So they may not understand how the search terms work. Okay, In a way, 
whatever information they seek what i am trying to say is it could be a kind of misleading it may not be trustworthy not all the times but at least sometimes sometimes children may unintentionally and unknowingly invite trouble so we need to teach our children to be cautious and to be on their guard the most important thing is kids have to be on their guard so it is very important for us uh, to know certain things how aware are we as parents as teachers or other as adults or as any member of the family and uh, adults around our children matters the most so that is why uh, this session um now you know like uh, any gadget you take whether it is your ipad or iphone or smartphone or your kindle i mean you know or your uh, you know tab whatever you take or your laptop or computer any device or any gadget you take which i just now said that we get a lot of information becomes very limited in use until and unless it is connected to internet so internet is the buzzword that is most important today now what is this internet see internet may be considered as a kind of a vast network that enables an individual to obtain any kind of information that is available uh you know like www we type that is the world wide web is a most used legitimate platforms to navigate uh, you know like using popular search engines this is a main thing that navigates us so we use certain search engines like it may be google or it may be yahoo or it may be safari or bing or duckduckgo so many i mean search engines are there so actually this is just the top of iceberg but there is a lot for us to understand it is not as easy as it seems see at basically the internet and ww w they do not respect territorial boundaries the role of a national law and mechanism is limited in the management of the cyberspace i'll be talking about it a little detail see actually what happens you know most of the servers okay all these are uh, like you know uh, all, all the, our service providers either they are in western europe or in united states okay where which is beyond our indian law every country has its own law national laws right so our national laws and our policies will not work in other countries that is very obvious but however the government could block certain internet service providers and keep the children safe see actually the government can also place restriction on internet service providers and with regards to the content deemed illegal or offensive for example few communist countries have blocked google they have blocked facebook they have blocked twitter they have blocked instagram and even wikipedia for the past decade or so but is it possible in india india we are democratic country you would try to do one small thing there are thousands and millions of people revolting against it and wanting it back and all that so in a democratic country like india government actually cannot block the site or it cannot say like you know uh, it cannot put heavy restriction on us that is another thing but again even in those countries where there is a lot of restriction whatever i spoke is uh, put in they have that those countries have their own you know like uh, service providers or their own stuff uh, so like uh, thousands of uh, i mean you know uh, like uh, what you say uh they have their own um, apps like uh, baidu and wechat or vexin or sogo or so360 they perform the same functions as though with a very strong dose of censorship but what i am trying to say is we cannot completely cut off from internet our life will actually come to stand still if we are away from internet today we have forgotten what is it to write a manual letter so email came in so we all used to send email to our relatives and friends and all that now there is one more step ahead people are lazy to write emails also even official you know like leave letters and all that people send it by whatsapp 
though i hate it official communication should never be done on whatsapp whatsapp is for your personal connect but people are becoming so lazy in the sense you know they are adapting to newer things that is fine so email also is now only when it is necessary or it's very official otherwise people use this whatsapp and messengers and everything leave alone that they are using the shortened form of sms lingo you all know like you know that kind of english also is getting spoiled and now the newer trend is people even feel lazy to type those uh, shortcuts on the whatsapp so what they do is they voice record and send see this is how we are adapting i don't know whether to call it a real uh, i mean good adaptation or bad adaptation there is nothing like good or bad it's again your own uh, thought like your own process how you think about it anyway so back home india what is happening is our children are very smart and also like most of our kids know english even if you go to rural areas they may not be able to articulate and speak very well but they do understand some english so and uh, at least workable knowledge so they use the search engines to get the information and now actually google enables you to search the terms in your own local language what else you could ask for everybody knows their mother tongue or local language so they search and they get it so what i'm trying and another thing what is happening you know earlier having a mobile was considered as luxury now you go outside i mean uh, first the pager came so only the doctors and the those who were in emergency services they would flash pagers and go away you know i'm talking of for 20 25 years back so that used to be considered as very smart and later you know like uh, mobiles came i'm not talking police uh, service and all that they have walkie talkie they are a different uh, sector altogether i'm talking of commoners like us so then the mobile came so earlier mobile also was considered wow like you know he or she has a mobile but now it has become so cheap you go you can get everything everybody using even the sweeper on the street and your sabji wala and anda wala everybody and everybody you say why it is so i'm not saying they should not use because mobiles have become cheaper that is a affordability i'm not against anybody's using anybody can use the device as long as they are able to buy it. what i'm trying to say is it has become very cheap so this gives a easy accessibility to all sorts of children like it's not just you know Uh, children in elite homes or middle class or upper no nothing there is no class like everybody is uh, able to access these gadgets and also internet providers also are competing with each other internet is made so cheap nowadays that everybody is able to use now why i am talking all these things is ultimately we cannot stop children from using either gadgets or internet but children form a very very vulnerable group you know and they often face a lot of problems online they face online threats and online abuses and exploitation that is where like we need to be completely careful about them so that is what i am going to talk today actually uh, children may face some kind of cyber bullying we all know bullying right so i don't have to explain what is bullying as parents and as adults we know about it but cyber bullying is more more difficult to handle than actual bullying in the schools or among the peers and all that so children face cyber bullying like social exclusion and defamation now you may ask what for small children and teens what social uh, seclusion and what defamation no please don't say that children are very sensitive especially children in the pre teens and teens once they are 8 9 year old that is where they start connecting to their peers so they they are understanding the ways of the world see for pre teens and teens their friends and their circle and they become their immediate society other than home at home you may keep them completely cozy and you may you know like give them a very great feeling everything is fine but they seek approvals they seek connect and they seek that bonding with their peers that is where they are learning to adapt to the newer situations so i'll just give you a small example suppose a child how social exclusion happens it's in very simple ways in very minor ways it can uh, disturb children somebody like you know posts a picture a, a, let's say a boy posted a picture with a new hairstyle or something for some reason others may want to pull his leg or bully him like you know so 
देर आर इंस्टेंसेस वेर चिल्ड्रन कॉल अ पीच अदर एंड से सो एंड सो हैज पोस्टेड अ पिक्चर सो नो बडी शुड लाइक दिस देर आर सम नेगेटिव लीडर्स लाइक दिस ना इन एवरी स्टैंड लाइक जो से डोंट डोंट हिट द लाइक एंड डोंट कमेंट जस्ट इग्नोर सी अंडरस्टैंड वन थिंग इवन इग्नो इग्नोरिंग बाय देर ओन पियर्स कुड बी अ काइंड ऑफ अ चाइल्ड माइट स्टार्ट फेसिंग यू नो सेक्लूजन लाइक नो बडी इज राइट आई मीन uh liking me and i am kept away so he may feel secluded now what is defamation that people sometimes children post pictures of uh, their friends and tag them or he is a liar she is a liar and uh, she has no manners anything kids sometimes they just do it for fun they do not understand even the children who are doing engaging in bullying they don't understand that it's a very big deal so they i mean you know this also can disturb them then you know online sexual abuse uh, like blackmail and financial exploitation also is very very common these days and online frauds like phishing and hacking privacy breach and then online enticement like you know exposure to inappropriate content and sexting and so on can disturb now one of the worst thing what happens generally with all of us is we are not prepared to believe that my child may get into such trouble that myth you have to burst it is not that somebody else's child is getting into it why should i bother every child is my child you get into that mode because no no child wants to enter into these zones but automatically sometimes it happens knowingly or unknowingly or by foolish act that is where awareness among the parents is required and awareness i mean should be given to children that is what i am trying to say so actually we have to we as adults in their life have to inculcate that resilience among children which needs to be actually nurtured and uh, strengthened in order to empower them for the challenges and opportunities that they may face while using digital technology the optimal safeguard for children is to facilitate uh, their access to the internet and protect their privacy and uh, you know like uh, you can increase self expression and then you know ensure that they can uh, recognize potential dangers and also know what to do about them then how to handle this see the problem is we have to keep our children completely aware of what what are the dangers and what are the threats not directly don't start sitting and uh, explaining to children no this is like this texting happens this happened kids will get scared how you are to do it is subtly in the form of stories see some somebody did like this and something it happened so beta you be careful don't uh, get into this so the first thing is win the confidence or trust of your own child don't have the habit of snapping them and shouting them i knew it you to it happen some mother say like, it's not because you hate your children or anything but you know sometimes you don't know how to handle so the child comes and says somebody sent me a dirty message mama immediately don't start shouting how many times i have told you to keep away from these kids and you are not doing this don't do that whether it's online or offline sometimes it may be just a message on their mobile or you know while they are surfing something may come up then children will start avoiding any you know communication with you because you snap them out and you shout them and you are only like this how many times i have told don't go see you cannot prevent your child from mingling with any kind of children even if they mingle they should know how to maintain their distance and how to keep away from those things and keep the interaction minimum that is the thing so that kind of awareness you need to uh, tell them so you can't keep them away from gadget internet at all so we need to teach our children digital literacy this is very very important so now you may ask what is digital literacy now digital literacy is nothing actually i would call it one of the important 21st century literacy skills i would say so it is the ability to use digital technology uh, safely uh, while you know like uh, staying within the boundary or within the bounds of social responsibility so there are so many terms i used i said it's a 21st century skill and then i said Uh, you have to keep uh, keep yourself safe or behave safely and staying within the limits of social responsibility now what is this social responsibility i'll be just uh, discussing it a bit later 
Now, teach your children how to minimize the risk and maximize the benefits. Okay, when it comes uh, to using these digital technology and uh, ga uh, gadgets. Say, for instance, many students enjoy playing games or many children enjoy playing games, online games. However, they need to understand the potential risks associated with online gaming and accordingly select the games. So, don't uh, encourage your children, you know, buying PlayStation also, like it's become like a fad. 25, 30,000 is okay. Everybody affords these days. They buy the, I mean, basic PlayStation also. And more than children, I, I have seen so many adults, mothers and fathers busy playing it. There's nothing wrong, but what kind of games you are playing matters the most. If you are playing games like Road Rash, where everything is killed and this and attacking. So all the games are built like that. So naturally, you start feeding your brain with so much of negativity. One fine day, you may believe that, okay, it is okay to whack somebody. It's okay to kill somebody. It's uh, okay to hit somebody else's car. It's okay to hit and run. So this you may not realize, but it enters your brain, enters your mind very, very subtly. So you must be very careful of what kind of uh, uh, games you select. And warn the kids about, you know, uh, strangers online. And let them know about what is cyber grooming and how they can be enticed. And make them aware of deep web and dark web also. That is very important. Don't tell very small children like 5, 6 years, 7 years. They don't understand anything. Unnecessarily, they might get into, um, they may get scared. I'm talking of uh, pre-teens and teens. So, you must make them aware of this. All right. And so, I was telling like, you know, we have to teach them certain things like how to manage uh, the stuff. Uh, social responsibility I was talking about. First thing is that is actually there is a new term coined now, netiquettes we call them. So you teach your children netiquettes, etiquettes of net or net etiquettes, netiquettes. That's how the word has come now. So first thing is whatever online communication you are doing, you need to take responsibility. All right. What is taking responsibility? You must be very, very careful of what you are posting online. And also what kind of information you are receiving and what kinds of in information you are forwarding. So forwarding the information and post very well after verifying and if it is trustworthy, if it is true, then only you forward it. Teach your children this, you know. It may be a simple thing, not always a very serious matter. Even somebody blames, a, uh, you know, somebody in the classroom or something. Teach your child until and unless you come to know the truth, don't forward it to 10 people. You will be subjecting the other child to a lot of humiliation. So, these are small things we can tell them. These days, otherwise, I have seen people send WhatsApp messages. Huge write-up is there. So, three, four lines they read. I am 100% sure they will not have read if it's a long post. But they will forward it to 10 people. Just to show how aware they are. and who are, I mean, they think it's a social responsibility to forward. Please don't do that. Every message you need to understand what it is and is it worth reading. If you can't read it, then don't forward it to others. Just delete and finish it. So many messages, everybody sends so many messages. It's not necessary that you read everything. People are foolish, so you can't be another fool with them. All right. So another thing now what I want to come uh, talk about is like avoid sharing posts. Uh, very strictly warn the children. Avoid sharing posts that are offensive and obscene. Actually, that's a legal crime. See, even the adults I see like, you know, forwarding some jokes and what, what they think as jokes and uh, sexually oriented jokes, especially what happens is as long as you trust a person and that person also reads, laughs and deletes, that is done. Otherwise, you could be framed into anything. So be very, very careful. That is also an offense. Actually, it comes under the offense and you, will be, you could be jailed for that if anybody goes and uh, complains about it. Now. Personal information also, you restrict your children not to share too much of information. And sometimes, you know, children come and say, I have a Facebook account, ma'am. I, I, I ask the kids, like, they are in uh, middle school and high school. I said, you're not even 18. Why you are uh, you not even 16 or 18? Why are you having a Facebook account? No, I've done my wrong birth date and I have done. I'm on Instagram also. These days, kids are smarter. So, please discourage that, you know, why they have to be exposed to the age restriction is there to understand something. Facebook is not going to monitor every individual. Whatever you post, you take responsibility. That is what I mean by social responsibility. We need to tell children what it means and how they have to 
go about it never create an account for a minor child at all because you will be exposing them to so many things which are uh, which may be completely undesirable okay and sometimes what happens is even the parents start oversharing the pictures of their children with the funny hairstyle and tagging them and writing captions and all that so what happens is this when they do when the children grow up this could become a kind of uh, laughable stock among their own peers and that may upset the child actually we have no right to post the pictures of children without their permission and with i mean nobody takes permission i understand that but at least all these kind of things we should not it should not call embarrassment to our children that's what i'm trying to say and also like you know uh, every uh, like uh, post contributes to permanent record see we may delete the photographs we may delete the messages but there is nothing deleted from the web everything remains in the cloud please remember that any time and every time there is a controversy every information can be retrieved so be very careful so this is the message we have to train our children like be very careful in what you post and just by deleting it on your app it's not going to delete forever it's going to be remaining in the cloud okay and also it is we always tell our children keep away from strangers don't talk to them and all that have you ever told your child to keep away from strangers online see there are so many people with bad intentions and uh, they may want to uh, i mean they may want to harm your children so first thing what you have to tell is never accept any friend request from unknown people even if it is your friend's friend i'm talking even the post teens like you know even uh, like those who are in grade 11 and 12 those kids also they also require orientation never accept any friends you have a friend and his friend or her friend can see the post and they will send a friend request but that person may not be up to the mark or his intent his or her intentions may be very bad so you need to be very careful so no friendship with strangers and the best way for small children when they are surfing and when they are using their online classes and everything is uh put one good antivirus software so that they don't get into any and i mean you know any kind of uh, undesirable zone and also what you could do is install a firewall or something like which can control and monitor and especially if you are having small children another thing is like there is a child monitoring software available these days so you can connect it to one of your devices if father is very busy you connect it to mother if mother is very busy you connect it father otherwise grandparents are there. somewhere you connect it so whatever sites your child visits whatever he is doing online can be i mean seen on your uh, uh, laptop or your device so please do that when the children are small because unintentionally our kids may get into wrong zones all right so let us see some more risks involved in this actually online uh, approach online activities they provide opportunity for expressing our opinions this i told already okay and the testing attitudes and exploring asian i mean you know identity and uh, social relationships so but many of us are tempted to take risks this also happens not with children in general then under the you know like uh, mis uh, mis misperception that we are anonymous online there is nothing called anonymity even in cognitive mode when you are going and surfing it is not seen on your device but if we want we can track it and see it uh, see it like you know what kind of uh, sites you have visited or what activity you have done so sometimes we show weak control of our time also this is another risk potential risk i have seen people and another thing you know wifi some of my friends only they take uh, pride in telling no 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 in my house 24 by 7 wifi is never shut off it's not nothing to brag you have to shut off your wifi after a certain time otherwise every adult every child has the habit of surfing on the smartphone till they drop their eye droop and drop their eyelids and go off to sleep which is very very bad okay mentally you are disturbing there may be some disturbing thoughts so whatever kind of things you are doing and also the radi- radiations are not very good and even wifi emits a very uh, you know high radiation so you can switch it use it judiciously when you are required to use and other time you need to, you need not so you should have a time limit actually you must be disciplined even in checking your messages constantly going back to a kind of facebook and instagram every 10 minutes every 15 minutes if you are checking 
that shows a kind of social insecurity you have what you could do is divide uh, keep a time evening 6 to 7 i'm going to see the messages suppose sometimes some urgent messages and all you can i'm not saying that but otherwise just going to these uh, social apps is uh, i don't think it is necessary like you know you uh, and we have to train our children and we have to role model if we are following that our kids will obey and we follow that that is the thing so actually uh, the expansion of this internet has led to a shift from face to face to a kind of uh, digital communication see i know for fact that even if we are sitting in one room and spouse is sitting in another room children are in the hall or children are in the other room people text messages from one room to other what kind of laziness what kind of dependency it is constantly like you know you you will text a message and is the food ready may i log off and come or you shout out and call see gradually what is happening is and so we are losing that uh, connectivity of the family we say like and uh, when you are sitting even on the dinner table and having your dinner so everyone is busy with their devices and uh, then you know they are listening to something what kind of a thing like you know that is not a family at all so you have to connect to talk to each other and ask what happened in their lives and you know, with the children also what did you do in school and wha- how you are feeling today i mean that that personal touch is going away because of this gadget that is another risk potential risk i would say so we need to control that wow all this information uh, that you shared with us today dr arundhati is like absolutely mind blowing and i'm sure all our viewers are also finding it very useful uh it's it's amazing to know all these facts on you know cyber safety All right so now it's time for a uh, question and answers and I'd like to ask you a few questions of uh, viewers if you have any questions you all can ask them too just write it in comments and we'll try to answer them for you um uh, but let's take some of my questions uh so dr arun that you spoke about uh, deep web and dark web in your discussion uh what's that all about all right see deep web is a network where data is stored in inaccessible database it includes all web pages website networks and online communities that are intentionally and unintentionally or unintentionally hidden and cannot be accessed through google or regular search engine so basically this deep web is used for uh undesirable activities uh, like uh, you know hacking and piracy and all, all those things now what is dark web dark web is actually it is an encrypted uh, network which is available to selective group you know and uh, it is not accessible to all again and this access is through authorization and a special or a special software and configuration uh basically this is a market uh, place for illegal goods uh, such as drugs and firearms and uh, stolen credit card numbers and uh, the dark web also is used for uh, other illegal activities thank you thank you for answering my question um i also want to ask you about cyber grooming now what is that all about all right see cyber grooming actually sometimes the strangers or even the people who are known you know they build emotional connection with children all right and the young and even the young people like uh, i mean first year second year college goers so whatever kind, i mean that uh, vulnerable i consider everybody children till at least 19 20 because they, they after 18 uh, legally they are adults but they are still small you know like up to 20 years that is uh, that bachpana is always there like you know that child experience and you are still raw that's what i would feel and uh, what happens is like uh, uh, there are strangers as i mentioned or even people who are known to us who want to build a kind of emotional connection with these children and young people online or sometimes it would extend to face to face after getting uh, to know to online to gain their trust and basically there is a purpose of sexual exploitation or sexual abuse that is what uh, is it now many children and young people they start being you know like uh, uh, 
uh, these groomers have their own ways they make the children and youth feel very uh, feel very special about you know their uh, that friend, friendship or that relationship is developing between and they do not understand why they are groomed so grooming is uh, uh, a way like you know it's not very obvious it's very subtle but it has a lot of serious consequences that is where we need to safeguard our children so i would conclude my talk with this be very very vigilant on your children trust your children in the first place if they encounter any problem online or anybody is chasing or anything they get upset about the online communication with their friends or anything so like they you should be the first person they would come and tell you like you know mom and dad the parents are the most important factors and like they have to go rush to the parents to seek that emotional uh, stability so for that you require emotional connect don't just harp and shout at you and scream at your child or don't even show uh, don't even doubt them if a child comes and says mama i was not wrong sometimes i agree children also manipulate children also may tell lies but even if you come to know sometimes a child is manipulating try to go slow instead of harping and screaming and shouting try to understand the whole situation then when the situation cools down you can explain to your child look here i understand but you know somewhere you are also wrong you can't be saying like that so there is a way and technique of handling children because emotionally as i told the kids are very small and they still und- I, i mean don't understand what is right what is wrong what is good what is bad so we as adults we need to take care of our children uh, so i hope uh, you found this uh, talk very useful and uh, again next uh, next month we will meet uh, with another interesting uh, topic thank you